as Nathan was just starting to say, Nathan Scott is going to talk to us about developments in PCP and Performance Copilot. Thank you. Uh, yes, so I'm Nathan Scott. I work at Red Hat in the Performance Tools Group. Uh, we do uh, performance analysis tools such as PCP, which I'll be talking about today, but also other things like Valgrind and System Tap and one or two other tools that we look after. Um, so our position in, Rail, uh, in Red Hat is we work on the tools that are in Rail, so we're sort of operating system and sometimes kernel people. Um, PCP is probably the, the, the highest level tool that we're involved with in, in our group. Um, and I'm going to talk exclusively about PCP and things that have been changing in PCP in the last uh, year or so and perhaps a little bit further back that might be of interest. Um, I gave a similar talk yesterday where I gave a, good, uh, a, a long overview about uh, introduction to PCP. I'm going to kind of skip through that today because I think uh, a few people will have seen that already and it um, can take quite a lot of time to explain PCP. It's, it's quite a, a huge software project. Um, so I'm going to focus uh, just a, a very quick overview of PCP and then focus on all the new stuff that uh, might be of interest and um, perhaps in the questions we could come back to anything that I've skimmed over at the start. Um, so PCP is a toolkit. Uh, we're talking system level analysis, so we're not talking about profiling kind of tools. We're talking about tools that can analyze multiple systems at once and tools that are aimed at looking at historical data, historical performance data, as well as live performance data. Um, and they're extensible, we'll talk about that, um, and fundamentally distributed. So we're talking about multiple computers at once being analyzed and interactions between computers. Uh, this is the architecture. I'm going to skip through this relatively quickly because it's not that relevant to the talk. But basically we have a collector system, which is any system you want to analyze. It runs this main daemon PMCD, plug-in components that provide performance metrics, uh, which can be of anything. Anything you can measure, you can put into PCP and make available. And then you have monitoring tools, which are client tools, which then uh, uh, report that data or record that data or do something with that data, create charts or analyze the data, create summaries of it, or whatever. Um, but there's a, a very strong separation in PCP between this uh, monitor and collector concept. Uh, I'm going to skip over this one, except to just say the concept of a metric is core to PCP. Uh, metrics are extremely well defined. You know everything there is to know about a performance metric when you're working with PCP. Uh, and when you're adding new metrics into PCP, you need to define them very clearly. And this gives that ability for PC that PCP has to separate the, the client side from the server side or the collector side from the monitoring side so, so well. Um, so let's get on to the, the main gist of this talk, which is really talking about things that have changed in PCP in the last six to 12 months or so, and important stuff. Um, I'll start out with just general stuff. Um, and probably the biggest change in the most recent time is that PCP is now included in RHEL and is fully supported by Red Hat people, such as myself and the other guys that I work with. Um, and it's supported in all of the RHEL 7 releases and RHEL 6.6 onwards, it'll be supported. Um, we're seeing a, a huge amount of increase in activity in PCP. So this is a talk about performance, so I'll give a graph down the bottom showing the sort of development work that's gone on in PCP in, in the last well, couple of years. And that's kind of going back to when, um, so for, for many years with PCP was bubbling away and developing slowly and nicely. Uh, and then Red Hat became very interested in it. Um, and around just before the start of 2013, um, it was decided that we'd look into putting it into RHEL. And then you can see a massive ramp up in the amount of uh, lines of code. There's similar graphs for commit activity and contributors, and it's sort of um, snowballed from there. Um, so what, th what that's let us do is, um, and instead of just keeping the project bubbling along, we're now tackling some of the very difficult problems that the project has had for a long time, or long-standing feature requests that we've never really been able to get to. So we now have ded dedicated en engineering people working on some of these problems. Uh, I'll talk about some of them a bit later, if I get time. Uh, we do very regular stable releases, so maybe once a month, once every six, 
weeks, six weeks or so, we pull everyone's work in together. Uh, we have uh, very uh, stringent testing regimes around everything that we do, uh, and that lets us release relatively quickly um, and pull in new work. So there's constantly new people writing new collector pieces, for example, so instrumentation for new things that are in the kernel or new pieces of software that exist in user space. Um, they're being added into PCP on a regular basis and being released in a stable releases. Uh, and also, again, with Red Hat's um, commitment, we've been able to improve the out-of-the-box experience with PCP. So when you, when you go and install PCP and you switch it on, uh, it now does a whole lot more work than it used to do in terms of configuring itself and starting out recording automatically and records a good set, a good base set of data to start you off with. Um, so it gives you good coverage of all the things that you might be expecting to have, having used other tools like SAR and things like that in the past. So that, that used to take a lot of configuration and now it just magically works out of the box, which is great. Um, so yeah, in the last six, six months or so, we've seen uh, the introduction of, uh, well, going back beyond six months, um, is the HTTP JSON APIs that have been added to PCP that let you access performance metrics um, that are available through, previously only through C, C++, uh, Python kind of APIs. There's now a REST API, and so we're now seeing sort of rich uh, web clients starting to use PCP much more. Uh, and people have written uh, Graphite, Grafana um, sort of front ends that sit in front of PCP and are able to graph PCP um, data uh, very nicely in browsers, which has been a long standing request. So that's one of those things that we've had for a long time. But most of us being sort of kernel people and very low level people, we were less interested in doing that sort of stuff. Um, because we were using tools typically on the machine. So it's great to have got to that sort of thing, that sort of to level now. Um, um, so this was the topic of my talk yesterday. We've been doing work, work recently about monitoring containers with PCP uh, with the goal of not having to install anything inside of individual containers, but being able to look inside containers that you have running uh, with PCP either installed um, on the bare metal system running the containers or in a, a special privileged container, being able to sort of reach out, look inside another container um, and improve a whole bunch of stuff for container monitoring. Um, so the sort of stuff we had to do, so I don't think I go into a huge amount of detail here, but basically the client tools need to be able to tell, because it's a distributed system as well, you need to be able to potentially say from one machine, okay, I'm interested in connecting to this remote machine, I'm interested in container named ABCDEF over there, um, for that information to be transferred across to look up the, the information relevant to that container on the server, so to be able to identify which C groups are involved, um, and if the metrics involved uh, require changing of namespaces, like if they're network device statistics, for example, that you're interested in, or uh, mounted file system statistics, um, that server system is then able to switch into the namespace of um, that container on the, the monitored system and provide that data back. So that, um, yeah, so simplifying access to containers um, currently supports Docker's, uh, Docker only, but it's written so that we can support any um, other kind of container implementation. Um, and basically just trying to make it easier to monitor containers uh, from the outside looking in, basically. Um, so I'll talk about a little bit about the new collector stuff. So if you remember the design diagram from the start, PCP is kind of divided into um, monitoring systems and collecting systems. So the collector is the system that you're analyzing. Um, and one of the strengths of PCP is the, the diversity of data that we have available. And that's just something that's constantly growing, in particular as PCP is getting more use even within Red Hat. We're getting more and more people in so Red Hat's operations teams and Red Hat's uh, customer support people now sending in lots and lots of more uh, additional sources of performance data that we can just plug in automatically. 
um, and lots of things from the community as well. So uh, there's kind of two, two main directions, I suppose, that the community people tend to take. They, they either using PCP for analyzing uh, web stuff, or things that they're doing in the web space, and so we have additions to things like um, Apache, Elasticsearch, Memcached, um, and generally networking kind of additions from those folks. Or we have a whole bunch of other people working in the high performance computing space who are sending us patches that are related to the stuff that they're doing, uh, running on very large iron. So they have all their own job control systems and uh, distributed file systems that they're interested in. Um, so they're sending a totally different set of um, uh, collector pieces of code through to us. So it's great to have all these different people contributing now. Um, so that's just the flavour of some of the, the stuff recently, even just in the kernel. So we have the device map application stuff, we have um, EXT file system stuff, cluster stuff, compressed swap, and on and on. Um, and, the, and like I was saying, at the very start, it's designed to be extended. So if you have uh, metrics that are of interest to you, your application that you're monitoring, uh, you can plug that data into PCP as well, and um, that provides you with uh, automatic access to all of the monitoring tools that are able to record that data for you and analyze it along with all your other system level data. Um, so yeah, there's been ongoing additions to the, the database server uh, collector pieces, so the, the MySQL and Postgres plugins have been bubbling away as well over the last six months. Um, and another big addition was the, the Python the PMDA stands for Performance Metrics Domain Agent, so that's a, a plug-in collector piece. Uh, previously, for, for a long time, you could only write those in C or C++ or in Perl, and more recently, we've added Python to that set, and we're seeing a, a big influx of Python PMDAs at the moment. Um, so the monitoring side, which is the tools that report the data that the collector is, ma is being made available by the collector side, uh, lots of work going on there as well. Um, Python APIs exist there as well now, so on both sides of the fence you can write reporting tools that are in Python so they consume the data that are being produced either on the remote system, on the collector system. Um, and we've started seeing people implement uh, some of the standard tools that you might expect from uh, a, a general Linux install, like IOSTAT, Free, Numistat. Um, and the advantage they have in doing that is they can now take those, those same tools with the output that they're used to or that their scripts are, uh, are used to collecting and expecting a certain output format and run those tools on historical data. So you can say, well, show me the IOSTAT output from 2 a.m. yesterday morning and compare that to what's happening right now on a production system. Um, there's new web tools, like I mentioned before. Uh, there's been lots of additions to the graphical tools. So there's some uh, QT-based um, charting tools that ship with PCP in the PCP GUI package uh, that we've had for many, many years, and they're, they're really a staple part of PCP. Um, and we've been doing lots of work to improve the usability of those tools. People have complained in the, in the past, and there's, there's plenty of work still to be done, but uh, that's ongoing, and, uh, but good gains have been made. Uh, I mentioned before the ease of setup, so it automatically starts recording when you install and switch on PCP now, which you never used to do. Uh, so, uh, and lots of feedback has been taken from um, the Red Hat sort of customer support people saying this is the data that we need that the customers are requesting that is available from their systems. Um, and that's all been fed back into the releases um, to, to make sure we have good coverage. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk about is the, the progress that's been made in terms of taking data from other systems. So PCP isn't just all about itself. Um, we we want to be able to incorporate data, um, and not just live data, which is the, what the collector side of PCP is all about, where you inject new metrics and new values as things are happening on the system. But you can also take historical data, like uh, SAR data that you've got squirreled away, for example, or IOSTAT stat data that you've captured from last week, 
or have been capturing for the last n months or years and you can produce PCP archive format from that which then lets you use all of the PCP monitoring tools with that historical data. Um, that's about it. So um, there's a few resources that I want to point you towards. Hang on a tick. Um, there's loads and loads of information on the PCP website um, and uh, there are several books about PCP. Uh, they're also now all available online um, under an open license um, that is on the website. So feel free to have at it. Go for it. Uh, I was interested in the uh, instrumentation of DNS, wondering how that works. Is it tied into a particular DNS server or is it uh, looking at the resolver, hooking into the resolver libraries? What kind of information can I get from DNS uh, using PCP? I um, just want that specific. <laughs> yep, sure. Um, that, the particular example I had in mind was from a contribution that was made about a month ago where someone had uh, was exporting the information from, I think it's called the Unbound DNS server. Right, okay. Uh, yep. And that exports a bunch of statistics already. So there's a command you can run that Understood. produces Thanks. a bunch of Got metrics. Um, so those are now, they're unavailable. Any other questions? Go for it. Yep. What's the, level of gran uh, what's the level of granularity that you have on time and where does that come from? Does that come from the client side or the server side? Yep. Um, the recorded data for almost everything is in um, sort of get time of day level of granularity, which is microseconds. Um, so timestamps and timestamping is done on the server side. So as the sample is taken on the collector system. So uh, the client tool will connect to the, the server system that it's monitoring and will keep that connection alive for the length of the reporting tool. Uh, every time it asks for a sample of a set of performance metrics, uh, the server system will take a, a timestamp at the time the sample is taken and send that back. Uh, and that's a, a, sort of a, a Unix epoch timestamp that's sent back. Uh, the reporting tools also have information or have the ability to switch time zones. So once that uh, epoch timestamp comes back, you can choose later when you're replaying the data to replay it in whichever time zone you like. So it's, it's agnostic to the time zone. Um, there's a few caveats to that. So there's actually even finer granularity. Um, there's nanosecond level granularity for um, some concepts within PCP. So PCP is, is huge, like I said at the start, and it has this concept of event tracing in it in recent incantations. Uh, so you can actually feed event data back along with your sampled data stream, and that uh, tends to require a very high level of granularity, and so those, the timestamps that are associated with events uh, are at the nanosecond resolution, or can be done at nanosecond resolution as well. Any other um, questions, Guy? Is there any way to integrate this into Nagios or some other monitoring tool so you can have all the graphs in the same place? Yes, yes, there's um, lots of people doing that. So uh, the, the key piece of technology, so once you've installed the collector, so you have all of your machines in your data centers, for example, ready to go, so they'd have the collector system running and be able to export data using PCP. There's a, a program that comes with PCP called PMIE, which is the Performance Metrics Inference Engine. Uh, and that evaluates a set of performance rules that you give it. So you make expressions about um, performance situations that you're interested in using performance metrics. So it has its own little predicate calculus language where you can set up rules. So basically say, if certain things happen, well, the values of metrics change in certain ways, and, and you can be connected to multiple hosts. So you can say, if uh, the load average goes up to this on this host and the response time in the application goes down to this and this other thing happens and it's Tuesday, then you can send a, um, send a message so that you can uh, run a program and like, run the NCSA program, for example, and send an event into Nagios. So yeah, there's, there's plenty of people so, doing that. So would those results end up in PNP for graphing? So that sounds to me, what you described there, sounds to me like a, an yeah. alerting type That's right, thing yeah. into Nagios. Yes. But Nagios also with the PNP for graphs. Uh, yes, has I, I don't know of anyone that's done that level of plug-in yet. So. 
but there's now a REST API. If, if you can plug in that way, you could start doing that now. Yeah. Thank you. Um, is it possible to visualize a collection of metrics for a given environment, uh, for instance, in a cluster, and put them all together in a single place to see, say, for instance, the CPU load of a collection of servers at the same time? Yes, yes. Um, so there's several options there. Um, you can plot, so the charting tools that come with PCP, they create sort of a vertically aligned strip chart. Uh, you can plot individual plots from the different hosts, or you can also take that data in and create what's called a, a derived metric, where you combine the values. You might want to sum them together and divide by some other metric value or something. Um, that there's capabilities built into the client tools that allow you to do that. Um, what some people also do is create special um, collector system agents that sort of sit perhaps at the head node of a cluster, take data in from all of the systems in the cluster, and then monitoring tools connect to the head node um, and just pass out relatively. So if you have a large amount of data that needs to be pulled in from each of the nodes, then you can avoid sending all of that across the wire out, out of your data center, for example. Any more? Nope. nope. <laughs> you have to make it quick. So the the main uh, the main purpose of this, you know, what's the, like um, uh, the the it's intended to, basically to feed into um, things that people can understand bugs and performance problems? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, so it's, or is it intended to be kind of feeding into the, not the, the network operation center kind of view of um, what's happening in data center? Yep. What's um, the, so what the, the, main the goal aims? of PCP is to enable performance analysis. Um, so feeding into NOx and uh, alerting systems is really just one aspect of that. Um, another critical aspect is the recording of data and keeping historical records of what's happened on machines or multiple machines. But basically everything that's going on in PCP, in PCP is focused on performance analysis. So if there's anything that's needed to do performance analysis at a system level, that's the goal of PCP. No worries. Okay, join me in thanking Nathan for his talk. <laughs>